Warning, this program is intended for adults of legal drinking age. Whiskey is consumed in disgust. The intent is to educate our palates on the differences of whiskey flavors and not an intent to get drunk. Please drink responsibly. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Joseph Limbaugh and um, this show is called I Fucking Love Whiskey. Not to get too meta, but I fucking love whiskey. Uh, unsurprisingly, and uh, as always, I am joined by my co-host, uh, Mr. Andrew Pierce. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I fucking love whiskey. It's, it's time for confessionals. Um, and today we have a, a wonderful guest who we we barely know. We we met them on Instagram and started like going. We have the same whiskeys uh, from my old hometown of uh, Oakland, Mr. Nick Bishop. Hey, hi everybody. Um, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for being thanks on for the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah. So great to meet some new people and have some whiskey. Oh, yeah. What could go wrong? Yeah. Well, we're going to find uh, out. <laughs> what could go? What could go right? I think is the question. I think everything is going right. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, right down here uh, in the lower uh, right corner, lower right corner, there is a list of the whiskeys that we're going to be tasting on the show today, and uh, approximate times in the YouTube channel. You can find it if you uh, like whiskey, like we like whiskey. You can follow us at, on the YouTube thing. I'll post the link again in a, in a little bit. So please, you know, do that. Let, let's go to our first whiskey. Let's let's go to number one here. This is a single cask uh, from Le Chag, which is the uh, Tobamori distillery, their peated output. And it's a 21 year old and it's fantastic. And it's unfortunately sold out, um, but woo hoo. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Barnyard in there. Yeah. That's grandma, but she died. Damn. <laughs> she died on a pyre, like a Viking pyre. She, she, we, we shoved her out in, in a, a hay-filled raft into the lake and then fire, fired a flaming arrow. She was wearing some nice perfume, though. It was in she there. Was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't ma- doesn't mask the scent, though. That's in the video. Not like that overwhelming sort of perfume, but like a nice, a nice perfume, I think. Yeah. Well, she was classy. She was classy. Grandma was classy. <laughs> Important whiskeys is saying you're going to divert the conversation to Belvini somehow. There's nothing to say because there's nothing to taste. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so that's harsh. That's harsh. <laughs> yeah, definitely campfire in here. I'm always surprised how I always forget that Le Chegg is peated. I just think, oh, yeah, it's going to be funky. And then, oh, that's right. It's peaty and funky and all of those good things. It's got to have like... I, did it say what cask it was? X sherry butt. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. My God, it's oh, full yeah. of stars. <laughs> hey, I've read that somewhere before. Are we, t- <laughs> Are we tasting? Are we tasting? Let's taste it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Mm. Oh. Just that rich. This is like elegant wood taste. Like I feel like I'm drinking uh, a like an elegant fancy den with like books and leather and like really you know fancy like stained oak that is that is aged and like it's that entire den has been distilled down into this. Um, it's yeah. Well, this when you is say like, it like that, it's actually affordable, right? Because who can afford a den? Right. Yes. I can only afford essence of den. <laughs> yeah, this is the Desence. closest I'm gonna get to, to yeah, Densens, Densens, Den, Denisens, Densens, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can workshop it. I think now we're workshopping it now. It's true. Need to know the story behind the signed flag. Lieutenant Boyd. Oh yeah, wow. uh, getting right into it. I mean, wow. all right, uh, uh, let's find questions. out more about Nick. Yeah, we. Yeah. we that's we why we're. That's why we're he's on the show. It's it's actually not. It's actually a um, a, a weird piece of appropriation, I guess. We were in Amsterdam, and there's a store there called New Zealand Auckland, which is where we're from, and walked past this shop, and they've just got all of this New Zealand uh, merch in there, and so we bowl on in, thinking, oh yeah, we might be able to speak English for somebody. No, that you know, it was this very much apparently New Zealand is cool in uh, Amsterdam. Who knew? It hasn't been cool anywhere else for years. So <laughs> it was like, you know, Grafton University. There's no such university. There is a street in Auckland called Grafton Street. Uh, uh, so we 
found that flag and it's awesome and it's got all sorts of marketing crap written on it but it's the coolest thing we've we've seen with a new zealand flag on it forever so we just bought it and hung it up there there you go. This is our guest room. So we make our guests sleep with a New Zealand flag in the room just to really, you know, it's a power play. Yep. You're in a little piece of New Zealand here. Just it's to like let a them know. You're, you're a, a sovereign yep. territory. While, yes. while, you're, while you're in this in this room, you will have free health care and, yes. yeah. and, and a reasonable government. So just you deal with that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. And the COVID lockdown that's working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it helps when, you know, we, we all just do what we're told. <laughs> we're very compliant like that we're just nice people uh, <laughs> oh my this is you know this, what a way to start this episode this is how you ah, i've lost I, words. I've, I've seen what's coming it's it is all uh like a rocket ship to the moon from here like these are all great great it is uh i'm i'm worried though that we're, we've peaked this is it and we're you know this is as good as it's going to get and then the other one i mean who, who, impossible I, I always worry that but I'm going to say this is my favorite whiskey. Yeah, I mean, I, wish that, yeah. I know this is the thing you guys do, and I'm not sure if that's not my favorite whiskey, actually. Although, you know, I was like, God damn it, why do we have to pick one of my favorite whiskeys? Now I'm going to be the guy that says that. Again, it, it's a category. It's not, it's not a <laughs> ranking. It's not an exclusive position. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, it's like when you're 12 is... and it's your favorite movie. The last yeah. movie you saw was your favorite movie. That's exactly right. God. Yeah. Time is a river. It's not a road. I thought it was a flat circle. That too. Mmm. <laughs> Damn, that's good. Oh, I fucking love whiskey. Mm. I fucking love whiskey too. It's crazy. Oh, I love it because it's got like that, you know, that peaty smokiness of a Laphroaig, but it's not overpowering, you know, like a Laphroaig. Like, I love that, but this is like, it has it to like a nice, reasonable level, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure it would still like people who are not into Pete, they'd be like, ah, but ah, it's so I good. Don't, I don't think Lecheg has its own um, uh, malting floor. So I, I, they might go to Inverness or somewhere um, to get it done. Uh, but I know some people do send the Pete as well. So this might be Pete from the Isle of Mull, which is different than you're going to find on Isla. I, I don't sense. actually know. Do you know, Nick? I don't. I haven't been to Tobermory uh, yet. Maybe one day, but no. Uh, I was... Uh, I, in a, an unenviable uh, position of asking for a bottle of Ledeg at the whiskey exchange in London. And the guy very kindly pulled me aside and said, hey, bro, it's, uh, it's Lecheg or Lecheg. I'm like, oh, uh, cool. Because, you know, I'm sure they get it all the time, but I was yeah. the Ledeg guy. It was, it was yeah. cool. Gaelic is, is totally spelt to mess up the English. I'm, I am mm -hmm. certain that's why they did it. Mm -hmm. BH is a V? Okay, sure. Yeah. I still can't say Bonahabin. I always say Bonahabin, but I'll get there. You know, give me another 10, 15 years. And, and 10, 15 years of Bonahabin whiskey. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. You know what? The nose here. You can just. Yeah, I could just sit in that nose. Yeah, I could have we... it all day if I didn't want to sip it all day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, are, are we sciencing this? Like, um, I feel I, like we should. I, I don't want to. But, I've, I've got know. an extra bottle here, so I will. I'll take the bullet for the team here. And yeah, I think I might be a science denier on this one. I would, let's no. let's see what Andrew says. Maybe there's you know maybe there's something to it. Maybe something will happen. Like despite the strength of this and the power, like I do feel like water could mess it up because there's also a very delicate like balance <sighs> going on here. But the nose becomes a little more subtle, I think. Hmm. Like. The den is still there. It's still condensed essence of den, or descent, as I think we've coined. The Shakespeare's of whiskey. Um, there's, there's like um, the the funk in the barnyard. I, I think I, I don't think it harms the nose at all. Um, maybe just softens it a bit, opens it. I, you know, I don't think it's giving me anything new in the taste, and maybe I get a little bit more burn in the finish. Um, so I would say no on on water. It doesn't need it. It really doesn't need it. 
Um, yeah, this is pretty much a perfect experience as is. This know. is so good. Getting a lot of licorice on the finish, you know, but like leathery, li like, like a licorice shoe, perhaps. A licorice, yes. <laughs> I, I, I completely know what you mean now. I'm tasting it. Yeah, and now for me, the nose is like, um, it just reminds me of a campfire in the woods in Oregon, like that sort of, because Oregon, like the woods are very wet, you know, and there's like that a bit of smell of decay and, and new life at the same time, like just like in the woods in Oregon with a campfire. Um, very nostalgic, like reminds me of growing up. Are there any good uh, whiskeys in from New Zealand? There are actually, there are a couple. Um, there's probably more than a couple. I've tasted a couple and I liked them. Uh, the Thompson uh, in Auckland are doing some really awesome stuff and they do one with uh, Manuka wood. So th there's this almost honey, it's, it, it's, it's very smoky. It's not quite peaty, but you really get this uh, smoked fish thing going on and uh, it, yeah, very nice. And um, there's also a New Zealand whiskey company wood? who, sorry? Is that neutral wood? Manuka. Uh, Manuka. Wood. It's like, uh, you know, Manuka honey and all that kind of stuff. So okay. yeah, it has this very honey kind of thing. Uh, yeah, and there's another place down south that I've, uh, I was going to be involved with uh, before COVID hit um, that they found 440 barrels in an old abandoned warehouse. And they I love just, these stories. I love yeah, what So, uh, uh, you know, story of business in New Zealand, they go tits up and somebody buys you and sells all the parts for scrap. And there were just these barrels everywhere. And they found these barrels, this, this couple, um, and they decided to, to kind of mature them and sell them. And so there's these amazing whiskeys. There's a, a 16 year old uh, called the Omeruvian because uh, it's down from Omeru. And uh, it's just the, the driest, most yeasty red wine kind of malt you've ever had. It's so dark that it's, it's uh, like Vegemite. And, you know, for me, on oh. board, you know, can yeah. do. More yeah. Whiskeys yeah. pointed that out. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, there are quite a few others that I ha that I haven't gotten to yet, and I'm sure they're all amazing. Yeah. I, I, I like totally, I so badly want to taste that now. <laughs> like, yeah, that, like, sounds, is it, that sounds awesome. That sounds is it great. available in the US? Like, it's we... not, so it is. Well, no, it was. Uh, they do have another Omeruvian, uh, which is now an 18-year-old, but they've paired it back to 50%, and, you know, th this is a finite amount of juice they've got, right? So they're just... <laughs> They're just really trying to stretch it out. But the the 16 is like a 61 percenter or something. And it is, oh boy, it's an experience. It's uh, it's black like molasses and just, oh, wow. you know, it, you, you got to be careful because uh, I don't know if you've seen Venom. It's basically like being taken over by something. It You don't drink this whiskey. You basically are its host. It and, drinks you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, and it's fantastic. And I fell in love with the, them as soon as I tasted it. Um, so, yeah. If you can find anything from there, it's, it's it's fairly solid. They're not cheap though. But they're at Total Wine. They're at you know they're around. They are kind of more accessible things. Are there any good whiskeys from America? Yeah. Uh, I, I would say yes. I would say um, Balcones in Texas is doing uh, a Scottish style malt whiskey, and it's really good. Um, they're they're young distillery, so they don't they're, they're they're really kind of focusing in on it. But if you can find a Balcones, um, I would recommend that. Um, there's there's some uh, who is it up in is it Portland or is it um, Seattle area? I'm I'm blanking. The one that um, uh, Kelly Loman recommended to us. Um, oh, I thought that was from what is it? Westwood. Westwood, yes, Westwood. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Thad. Is that from Seattle or Portland? I thought it was like or Oregon. Well, I thought it was like somewhere, somewhere out east, but um, I might be misremembering. But yeah, th those were great. So uh, I, I think there are people doing that. Uh, you know, I, I'm a Canadian. I grew up on uh, rye whiskey, um, which there was no good rye whiskey in Canada. I don't know that that's changed much. I think there's Black Rock in Alberta right now that's doing some something better, uh, but I, I don't have a lot of experience with it. So. Um, and you know, as, as you know, on our show, we we think um, uh, bourbon is garbage. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I also would say, like, I mean, America that also includes South America, and you know, so yeah. So it's like, what is? Like, I wonder if there's any good whiskeys from from down there. I mean, there must be, you know. But it, I'd like to try some 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 whiskeys from. Someone other knows. Places. Let us let us know. That's that's Where why I was you? asking Nick about New Zealand whiskeys because it's like I wouldn't. I think it's harder to get whiskeys 
outside of those countries you know what i mean like you almost have to travel there i know like to get japanese whiskey the best way to do it is to take a trip to japan you know it's it's because it's hard to get that stuff if a canadian tells you to drink whiskey they're they're, they're probably serious so i i don't know white owl that that sounds like a new one uh, try it and let me <laughs> Bourbon exists to make scotch, obviously. Yes, of yeah, course. That's, you need that's to, 100% you need to get true. The, you got to get the casks after yeah. they've made the bourbon, and then you make some stuff that's good. You got to season it. sherry. <laughs> hey, let's go on to whiskey number two, because it's a uh, okay. quarter of the hour here. Here we go. This is um, Isla Straight, which is a teaspoon colila. So they've, they've added a teaspoon of some other um, uh, distillery into it, so they can't call it colila. Uh, but it is a colila, and they're a huge producer. If you have a blended whiskey that has a peated component it comes from Colila. This this stuff is good. Again, sold out at Kano, um, and we all have bottles that are very, very low. Yeah. Ah, Pete. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Nice. Oh. That's like a candy store whiskey, but it's like, but it's this, you're right, bananas. This is more like a fruit stand whiskey. Mm. Yeah. When I first popped this bottle, it was really rotten milky, and I loved it for it. It was very... Uh, you know kind of i wouldn't say vegetal but it was quite funky and I, I just don't get it now and i'm assuming that's just the time in the bottle especially the time in the bottle that low right yeah it may be all the air that's been exposed to it's still yeah. the smell the nose yeah right. none of none of the whiskeys i think we have today are going to be like uh mellow or light like and i love that like this this is yeah. like uh, are you immediately like even though we've capped it like but even if we didn't it wouldn't matter because it's like it's like mm. you're gonna this there's smell here and you're going to smell it you're going to taste this mm -hmm. you know these are authoritative whiskeys mm. i'm not getting a lot of peat out of it i think the the lecheg was that was the the peat dealer in the nose it, yeah, it was much yeah. peatier. and i the, know that i've gotten peat out of this before but i'm sure that that like that definitely just took the you know because the, the the lecheg was yeah quite peaty optimal's going don't worry fam i got you <laughs> just sitting there <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it yeah you just don't want to see the heat uh, <laughs> Come over here. Yeah. I'm going to show you some peat behind this door here. Jim McEwen is a crazy man. Or Adam. Adam is now a crazy man. Um, so I, I don't know if you watched the Water of Life film. I, I was uh, able to do it. Um, it's it's coming out and around and and and, and available from various places, various places. We had their uh, the director and the producers on at the uh, start of our season three um, earlier this year. Um, but in it, you, you find out that Jim McEwen handed a white sticky note or a post-it note to um, Adam uh, when he left that had the recipe for the black art on it and Adam kind of looked at it and said no Jim would want me to go my own way so he crumpled it up threw it out so um, Adam has made up his own recipes for the the black art since then oh, is that right so what was the last version of the black art that was his like 4.1 or something uh, four was certainly um blows someone my mind. in the chat will know I'm sure we got a good group of researchers there. I got a lot of smart. Someone is asking, uh, Andrew, a Canadian told me to try white owl. Was that a prank? Yes or no? I never had a white owl. I don't know. I don't even know the brand at all. So I don't, it could be, you know, uh, the bomber, burr, what is it? How do you say It might that? be a beer. We don't know. Yeah. Someone in chat will look it up and tell you if it's a good whiskey. Oh. Man, yeah, that's another one. I could just sit in the nose of this. It's so good. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. I'm well, going in. This is my favorite whiskey. <laughs> you haven't tasted it. That's probably true. I mean, I have tasted it before. I have a bottle that's, as well. That's also true. Yeah. Oh man, good. it's so spicy. This one, it has like a like a Christmas spice or like a just like a blast of cinnamon. You know, that's any spice that like gives you a burn. Mm -hmm. I feel. Wow. A bit more tobacco-y, kind of uh, sitting oh. next to somebody else smoking. Yeah, definitely like a like a pipe tobacco with a bite to it, you know, like mm. I feel like. But I don't feel like that tobacco is on fire. I feel like it's just the the, the leaves with the oil, the, the tobacco oil on them. Um, yes, Nick told you to try Balvini. Uh, it wasn't a prank. He really wants you to do it um, so that you diminish the supply and he doesn't have to have it in his box. It's true. Take the bullet, man. Man. <laughs> I don't mean to talk for you, Nick. Sorry. <laughs> no, you said you know you said you said it way better than I could. You know, you, you basically just you, you diss one Balvini on uh, Instagram once, and you're forever known as the Balvini hater. Sure, I've never had a Balvini I liked, but I've had one. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very small sample size. Yeah, Crown can. Royal, Crown Royal is okay. I mean, 
What? I think it says the caramel one. You know, the only thing good about Crown Royal is the purple bag that you get to keep your marbles in afterwards. The marbles? Every, you yeah, mean the, your dice? You put your dice in there, when Andrew. Dice, when this I was, is the future. People play role playing games now, man. When I was in elementary school, we didn't have dice. We had marbles. And Crown yes, Royal, we obviously. Would go with a Crown Royal bag. Crown, Crown Royal was for your parents, I'm assuming. Just showed our dad's drink. Canadian Club, that's no, that's a Canadian Club is a dare. That is a joke. Yeah. yeah. That is definitely a prank. Oh, bags of purses. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah, I like I, Crown Royal is a smooth bourbon. Like it's, you know, it's anyway, it's not this. Mm. Oh, it's just just like a stone fruit in there, um, like a peach or something in the finish. Um, it's something like sweet, a, surprisingly sweet after all that smoke. Mm. It is, I'm finding it very sweet. Is uh, I wouldn't the banana I'm getting is that kind of banana candy, I guess you know, it's very artificial flavored or like dried banana, like banana that's been dehydrated, it's like super banana oh, yeah. flavor. Yeah. Um, to me, like this house is a um, this is a house made of fire, um, of, of sweet fire on the elemental plane of flame. I mean, I'm just gonna lean into to D &D and, and our the dice things. bag, yeah. Go but yeah, the, this is this house is on the elemental pl uh, plane of fire, and it's made of it's made of flame. Um, but there's like they serve burned roasted fruits inside of the house. I think like a, like bana like the bananas Foster, you know, where there's they light it on mm -hmm. fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Table side. Boy, yeah. that brought back my dad. Wow. Bananas Foster. I, the only time I've ever had it was with my dad once at a place called the Petroleum Club in Calgary. Oh, it's fitting. Yeah. There's um, a really good uh, New Orleans-styled restaurant uh, over by Disneyland. I forget what it's called. Um, but they have, they have really good bananas, Foster. They have really good food, actually. Cool. Well, let's find out a little bit more about Nick. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you're from New Zealand. Uh, you came over here. You moved to Oakland three years ago. So is was that the first move to the U.S.? Or is this... No. Um, so... We actually won the green card lottery, uh, which is a thing. Um, and so it was actually nine years ago, I think. Uh, we moved to San Francisco uh, and, and we were there for, yeah, maybe three or four years and just, you know, living in a tiny apartment, doing our thing. And it just got too expensive. So we found a place out here and it kind of worked out, you know, you can kind of spread out. And yeah, so we've been in, actually, we've been in Oakland a little longer now, five or six years, but now current place for three. Um, Wow, yeah, still still getting used to being an American uh, every day because you know you guys are really weird. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm Canadian, so it, it was weird for me too. The first time I got my uh, my citizenship and had the passport, and I came in, and they said "Welcome home." That was a that was a that, yeah, that was cool. I liked that actually because uh, when I got mine, it was obviously some pretty dire times for um, immigrants. So when it was the "Come on and welcome home," it was like that's cool. That's, I liked that a lot. Um, so yeah, I do, and I do like having two passports because you know I've got to get out of jail free card. Right, it's true. I feel like a spy. Yeah. <laughs> Never give them both. Never give any customs uh -oh, no. both passports. No, 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 no. That will not go well for you. They don't like that. They don't yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, when the apocalypse comes, you can go back to New Zealand and hang out with all the billionaires that will be living. Yeah, yeah. In their bunk I mean, in their bunkers. Cool. Hang out in with the Peter Thiel. I mean, that he's he's got to be nice, surely. Maybe. I mean, he's rich. Huh? Isn't everybody uh, nice? Uh, this is just, you know, me being a New Zealander again. We just, we, we like everybody. Uh, are we, uh, we should probably science this, right? I mean, oh, we all oh, have yes, a bottle, right. we all have a bottle so we might as well, right? I mean, uh, having to try and ban a spammer in the chat there. Um, oh, my God, I love this stuff. All right, I have scienced. Okay. Got new curtains. Thad, quit advertising. <laughs> yes, I got new curtains. Huh, it seems a bit more lightly fruity than me. I feel like it's more bananas foster in that it's like a like a gentler banana flavor rather than a than a. a like this, this is gonna be forever the ban banana whiskey for me now that you've said that. Yeah, I should get less of it now uh, with a bit of water. Yeah. Oh really? Definitely less, but it and and what's in there is more mellow. All right, let me try it. And a little more heat on the nose, I feel like, in the back. A little more burn. It might be because I'm breathing in harder because I can smell less. 
don't know. Oh, it's so nice. It's still nice. It's still really nice. Mm. <laughs> the banana phone, nice. Oh, well, that's interesting. Really spreads it out. I'll probably get a little bit more of that um, tobacco-y smokiness. There's a sweetness in there that I want to say licorice because that's all I ever say. Because if it's sweet, it's licorice. Because I don't really know anything else about it. But I'm sure there's there's you know there's deeper notes in there somewhere. But I'm getting a, a very licorice tobacco. Um, uh, one of the frequent people in the chat, Brooke Lassie, um, actually bought a bunch of British candy online because we kept getting references to them in the SMWS tasting notes, and we we're like, what does that mean? Um, so. Yeah, that's I mean, luckily for me, I grew up with a lot. I think one of the things I've realized about moving here is that a lot of things I grew up with were just English. They just shipped them over to New Zealand, called them New Zealand. So we, you know, if you're talking licorice all sorts or wine gums, mm -hmm. treacle, all that kind of stuff, we're like, yeah, we grew up with that. Isn't, you know, isn't, doesn't everyone have it? No, only if you're a colony. And some of them yeah. came to Canada, but uh, some of them definitely did not because in that batch there. I'm things. getting a real taste of jam dabbers in here. <laughs> And and and, and frotitos, frotitos. I, I get some frotitos. Frotitos. See, that's the thing is like you can just make up words, you know, and people will think it's think it's real. I like I think it's more Australia than New Zealand, but like Australia, I feel like Australians have a lot more like um, phrases, like uh, you know, like 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 it's like, kind of like the South, like the South would be like you know. That, that's like shit through an owl or you know whatever you know what i mean like yeah but i feel like there's in australians have a lot of like um phrases like that you know like, you do uh, i mean and in their defense they have to say things very quick because the country itself is trying to kill them yeah. so <laughs> you have to say things very quickly otherwise anyone any number of the snakes or spiders or lizards that want you dead will will do it so you know you can't say afternoon you've got to say avo what are you doing right. this avo because afternoon oh. you're dead sorry <laughs> Yeah, a, a friend of mine said that like the way to do an Australian accent was basically you do Cockney, but you keep your mouth closed because the, they have kept their mouth closed so no bugs could fly into it, right? And kill them, right? So yeah, it's good. just it's just Cockney, but you, your mouth barely moves at all. So yeah, I think it's all based on like getting the information out as quickly and efficiently as possible. Right? Right. Yeah, well, it can't be right. Oh my god! Wow, yeah. that's that's pretty good. It, it works. All I have to do is do my accent, but say mean things, and then I sound Australian. It's pretty easy. <laughs> I love that. That's true. Oh gosh. How am I loving the American chocolate? Mm -hmm. Not so much. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, that's probably not true. Uh, I've, the only American chocolate I know of is uh, Hershey's, and that does taste like vomit. It's, oh, you got it. There's, yeah, the, there's, there are better stuff, things, but like a, definitely imported chocolate is, is better, like, you know, for a lot of stuff. But what, what's happening? Octomore? Is Octomore happening? Ten point one Octomore. The the bottles. I mean, yes, heavily peated, but like, what a marketing! Uh, I wish yeah, somebody. This. I wish somebody from Ardbeg would fire the Ardbeg marketing team and hire just one person from the Brugatti marketing team. Just, you know, I don't want to have to buy things with 18 A's in them, four R's in them. You did, you, did you get that? Because I avoid, I, I had a friend, I have a friend, uh, you know, Jim Looper, who's going to be a guest on our show sometime. Um, he got it and he's an Ardbeg lover. And we said, well, how is it? How is it? Are we going to get one too? And he was like, oh, it's nice. And we were like, oh, no, no, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> don't need you to know, that. I, I do have one and I... I'm liking that everybody is setting my expectations. Uh, I've never, I've, I am, it was one of my favorite distillery visits when I went there. It was fantastic. I loved going in there and having some of the, you know, the nice stuff. Um, but yeah, those releases sometimes aren't great, but I, yeah. I'm a sucker for them. I, you know, I mean, they just hurt me so good every time. I, I'm, I'm, I, and I pretty much got every committee release since I learned about Ardbeg, but I mm -hmm. just skipped this one. It just like the rum finish did not, it's not my favorite finish. Um, just keep going back to the Ugadol. Like, why would I not have, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's like, it's perfect. It's fucking perfect. I fucking it, love whiskey. You know, I, keep, I fucking love Ugadol. I fucking love Ugadol. <laughs> I keep a list. And yes, by, by frequency of purchase of bottles, Ugadol is my number one whiskey. It's just always good. It's the first um, uh, Scotch I ever bought, I think. The first? Ooh. 
Yeah, yeah, it was a homework. I, I got talked into going to Isla, or as we called it back then, Islay, and uh, I had to do homework because we were going in three or four months and I'd never had a scotch before, really. I had a couple of Macallans or some shit. So, uh, so my journey began. Wow, wow. I mean, my first peated was uh, Lagavulin and oh, I thing. instantly loved the peat. I just didn't understand how a liquid could taste like that. Yeah, and for me, it was Laphroaig tenure. So I feel like we all kind of started our journey in a similar place, <laughs> yeah. Isla, which yeah. I'm sure we all called Isla at the time. Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> or Islay or something. Um, <laughs> who could also a great dram for talking on the phone? Amazing. Hmm. It's a great dram for anything, man. Oh, favorite whiskey. Oh my God. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. This is almost like, um, it's almost like a candy store right now, which is surprising to me for um, something so, so Peter. I think because of where we've been. This was 107, so definitely not in the high range uh, for for an Octomore, but so it's going to be the first one of the of the afternoon that isn't particularly finished in anything. It's pure bourbon barrel, right? Uh, it's the point one. Um, I think that's the bourbon barrel. I can never remember the. Yeah, me neither. Thank you. Hmm. So yeah, just the bourbons. Oh yes, it says on the screen. <laughs> Thank you, Thad. <laughs> Thad is doing his job. Yeah, he's 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 able to read where we are not. Okay. Oh my god. That's so good. Like it is similar to the last two, but it is so specific and so like it just hits that, that perfect note in there. Okay, now I'm getting some of the smoke and Pete down in there. Important whiskeys, are you are you tasting along at home? A free candy man of whiskeys. I think, you know, yeah, I'd get in this, no problem. Yeah, it'd be yeah. I'd be locked away. And hey, hey there, would you? Okay, come on in. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. I'll come. This is it? Yes. Oh, yeah, but the van also just dumps you out on the freeway because I don't want anything to do with you after 15 minutes. Yeah, nah, you're too intense. Get out of here. <laughs> oh. Well, then, important whiskey is you're doing it wrong if you're not tasting along. Just, just saying. Because, oh, oh, my. Oh, wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's full of pee. Favorite whiskey. Oh my god. Um although um you know Kolya, who's been a guest on our show, uh shared a two and a one Octomore with us. Uh and you know, I, I brought the four to this picnic. Um so we, we had a six and a four and then a two and a one. And we kept thinking, oh, this is so great. And then we'd taste the four and it was like, oh my God, this is so much better. And the two was like, and one just like, Wah! I don't understand how, I don't, I don't I, like Jim McEwen when he got over there and had all those old bottles or old ca casks, just a treasure trove. And he was able to just experiment with whatever he, he found. Just I, I did see a 1.1 .1 on sale I was walking through San Francisco about a month ago and it just like there was a window and there were bottles of Octomore and crazy old art bags. So I walked in and they had a 1.1 for sale. Only $950. That's what a all? steal. That seems like a good deal to me. One per customer though, please. Just one per customer. <laughs> well, shoot. I mean, that's a good store if it's got that kind of selection. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Hearing the stories about the 1.1, I'm I, thinking it's tempting to me. Yeah. It's it's tempting, but I bought a PC five for that price too. So. Mm. Man, this is so good. I don't know. I'm worried about the the what is it? The last one we have gun smoke over the over the more. Like I'm sure it'll be delightful, but like Octomore is so good. This is so much my favorite whiskey. It it's almost a. It's not even just a taste. It's a there's, there's gravel on my tongue. As I, as I taste this. Hey, thank you, C. Juke Jones, for following. Maybe it's C. J. Uke Jones. I mean, C. J. is a name that people go by. So, I'm crying, I love this whiskey so much. Maybe um, it's C. J. U. K. Jones. Oh yeah, that makes a. Oh. I think Nick. I think Nick's probably right. I think that's got. Let's try and think globally here, can we, fellas? <laughs> 
Is that someone you know? But act I locally. Think, so, yes. <laughs> think globally, but drink locally. Exactly. Or also drink globally. Well, get the stuff imported globally and then drink it locally. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. Drink anymore. Scotland. Uh, it's the distilled essence of that country. It's unbelievable. I mean, that and Iron Brew, am I right? Um, oh, he says, hey, Nick, I think he knows you. <laughs> he does. I still think it's C. Juke Jones. <laughs> I mean, it could be. That's me, yeah. A Andrew doesn't understand handles no. on, on, on Twitter and whatnot. And, uh, and also, D. Panned the Logic. I think I got that right. That's yeah, fair. There are a lot of Joneses. It's hard to keep up with them, too. Ooh, there it is. Mm. Mm. You know, I'm not getting a hell of a lot of, a lot out of this right now. It's, uh, I think it's doing what it does, what it says on the tin. But I think the ones before it are, are kind of clouding me a little bit. It is interesting. Like, this is, this has, like, the flavors are so subtle. And it is so, like, mild. Like, the other ones were like, this is a flavor. This is a flavor. This is, mm. like... This like has all of the flavors it wants, but it's almost like it's smoother than I've ever experienced an Octomore to be, I think. Like it's so just like, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it seems it's subtle, I think, based on where we've been. I, guess. I mean, I'm getting a lot of smoke, uh, which yeah. is lovely. Yeah. But, you know, I'm trying to see through that because we've apparently been getting a lot of peat all afternoon and I'm, I'm having a few issues. But uh, I'll keep trying because that's what we're here for. Mm. Yeah, we're not quitters. No, no, absolutely not. We we need to make the effort. Oh, no good. Like there's something sweet. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. Like when I first smelled this, this was like a candy store whiskey to me, which I don't think I've ever had that experience with an Octomore before. But it's because of, yeah, it's because of the first hand. Well, I mean, like right now, there's like a wool sweater. Like soft wool sweater with just enough kind of rayon in it to let make it catch a light real quick you don't want it to be not flammable yeah because it, it should be able to kill you because i think this thing could yeah mm -hmm. oh there, there's a lurk in this absolutely mm. hey guess what there's that licorice there i go awesome <laughs> Back to the licorice. Or, or alternately, like someone wore the sweater at a campfire last night, and now you're like putting it on. It's like, oh, this was, you know, it's yeah. imbued with smoke. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, a wool robe you would wear it in a cult ceremony around a giant bonfire at night. Oh, mine's at the cleaners right now. Uh, but we have to summon the yellow king. It wasn't, there was no invite for this. No, no, we can't. There's no official invite. True. You get yeah, you the invite in here. Yeah. Uh, in your dreams, that's when the invite comes. <laughs> hey, oh, oh. I shouldn't talk about it on the show, I'm sure. But uh, I, I got my COVID shot uh, April 1st and uh, had four nights of really fucking weird dreams, uh, like fever dreams, just nonsense, crazy. And I thought I was the only one. I Googled it and apparently not the only one. Why should you not talk about it? I don't. I don't know. Because who who cares about my my dream life? I don't. I think it's interesting. I like because a lot of people are getting COVID shots now, and it's good to know like what like I, I think because like after I got mine, I, I definitely went and researched because I had like weird stuff happen to me, and I wasn't sure if like it's yeah, it's kind of you know, it's kind of unknown. Like there's everybody has different reactions. So, uh, what horrible. brand gave you the dreams? What 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 brand of the uh, vaccine oh. did you? Uh, I got the Moderna. That's but you have you have nightmares when you get the flu, right, Andrew? Like that's what you were saying. Like yeah, I, I have too. like really yeah. weird um, like gnomes like working, 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 and they're not restful dreams at all. It's, it's just a lot of work. And this was kind of along the same lines. Like I, and so that, all yeah. four of the dreams involved this show, which is the lowest um, possible stress level. This is, this is such an easy show to do. There's like, oh, I have the whiskeys here. I have to pour them in a glass and drink them and, and talk nonsense. And all of them were like, things were going wrong with the show. I couldn't find the whiskeys. I, I, you know, Joseph came over and it's like, you shouldn't be here. What are you doing? You're supposed to be on Zoom. We're supposed to be quarantining. What are you doing? Just, just like all of the stress, stress, stress. And oh, man, 
How many of you had the the quarantine, like the the pandemic dream, where you go to a public space and no one is wearing masks? Oh and you, yeah. And you realize you don't have a mask, and there's people all around you. You're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not. like yep. I've had that several times. Like, yeah, yeah, that's not cool. I've had that. I was at a bar, and all of a sudden, I'm like, hang on a minute, none of us have masks. Shit. And I I didn't drive here. There's probably not a mask in my car. And then I you know I woke up in, in Kira. Um, I'm assuming none of us are going to science this because it just to me doesn't seem like you know uh, what I, I'm I'm you're going to try I probably it. will comments I think he might yeah I will oh all right I'm not going to because for me this just seems so subtle right now but I'll I'll see maybe if it, it's amazing I'll, I'll try it we'll see what you guys let's think. see what flavor of licorice I get out of it after I put water in there <laughs> is it red or black the two flavors of licorice yeah is it Pfizer flavor or is it Moderna flavor or is it Johnson and Johnson flavor. How's Pfizer represent? I, I got Pfizer. I got Pfizer. Well, I, I think Pfizer is more of a body high, right? So, I mean, that's why I went for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually part Pfizer, part Hufflepuff. So that's, you know, like I'm kind of on the cusp of between the two. Hey, Major Paul. Hey, Major Paul. House <sighs> Johnson makes it sound like you, you could get the household Harkonnen if you wanted. But the boils, not great. Yeah. The floating is nice, though, being able to float around. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. or just being sting. Yeah. Now, we're referencing the... the sting in a diaper. Specifically. Cool. But, yeah. Sting in a diaper is still fucking a thousand times hotter than me, like in a suit, <laughs> so... Yeah, but what about you in a diaper? Well, that's... <laughs> that's on your OnlyFans. I know. You gotta pay for that. Yeah. I get a lot more oil and uh, leather now with a bit of water. So it's kind of, I guess, opening up for me a little bit more. You know what? I am, I'm game to try. A heart plugs. I, I get leather in the nose now with the water. Absolutely, wow. It's funny, I, um, I get, Kind of shades of maybe uh, a local barley or something. I'm trying to get maybe a bit creamy, wheatier something going on on the palate, but I could just be making that up to, to you know cover the fact that I'm still not getting as much as I was out of the first two. Right. Should I should I try water? Do you get? I, do you guys think? I, I haven't tasted it yet, but I the nose, the leather. I'll try. It. I'll try. Right there. This is a leather coat. This is. I like leather. It's really nice. Oh yeah, that is quite leathery. Oh wow, yeah. No, I don't. I don't dislike that. Um, a little more heat in the nose too. A uh, little heat in the finish too. Uh, I don't disagree with Nick in terms of like it not having a lot of very forward flavor, but there is like a, a orange reduction in the in the finish for me um, that comes out with the water. Yeah, it's, I mean, of course, now that you've said it, I get a lemon, I get an orange zest, you know, like somebody's expressed a bit of orange over it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, because yeah, you said it. I like it. It's an interesting, yeah, I would, you know, it's worth trying if you want to like, if you have a little left and you want to try it. Yeah, I think it's an interesting um, lateral change, I would say. Yeah. Here's a, the here's a question though, uh, Andrew, how do you compare this against some of the earlier Octomores you've had? Um, I mean, th this, this is really nice. But if I had a four or a six, I would be just gushing about those two. And um, Kolya, like I said, let us try the two and the one. And mm -hmm. those just like, you can see elements of what was in the PC5 in that Octomore, just like, oh, they're just, they're incredible. Yeah, I guess the only other one I've really had a bottle of was a 7.1. And that one, I found a little more tropical. So I kind of go towards that. This one, I'm not getting those notes yet. And this is, a, you know, it's a pretty high pour though. Like I haven't really had much of it. So I think I really started getting that those tropical notes uh, maybe when it was half full or less. So, you know, give it time. Uh, it, it's, it's so hard to know um, with these annual releases, but you know. I've still never met an Octomore I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Oh, well, um, 
let's finish this off. Let's go to SMWS. Let's go to Gunsmoke over the Moor. The Glen Turret, it is 16.48. Uh, it is 60.1% uh, alcohol, uh, distilled in December 2009. 10 year old. Let's find out if we like this. Uh, Let's find out if we fucking love this. We do. Well, oh, yeah. Spoiler, we're going to fucking love it. Oh. Wow. Yep. We're, we're back to big, bold. This is, yeah. Dead people. And I'm, for me, once again, this is this feels very candy store to me. Like, uh, well, not like very candy store, but it has that that hint of like a sweetness to it. But it's like, a, yeah, it's like a very clean, light sweetness. Like it's not cloying at all. It's um, no, it's it's like a flesh uh, a flesh laundry. <laughs> Hello, like a flesh laundry. I think that's right. Like if you could just take your pull your flesh off of your skeleton mm -hmm. and throw it into a into a washer, how convenient would that be? Because mm -hmm. I think the the red blood you're getting a lot of that kind of essence and uh, and the discarded cells of the skin. Gunsmoke over the moor. What an interesting name. Like, I don't know that I get Gunsmoke yet. I'm hoping that, the, I'm assuming it's going to be in the flavor, but I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Once again, where we've been makes any sort yeah. of smoke, I think, going to be, it's going to. Yeah, it's I mean, we're at a firing range right now, and yeah. we're maybe trying to smell a candle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I kind of get the moor essence. I get the, like, you know, the, the mist coming over from a lot of vegetation. Um, it's smoke, it's morning, the dew is melting and causing that mist to kind of like wash over you. Yeah, definitely like that picture organic, core, perhaps. Picture core. Ooh. Definitely that organic sort of decay, but like freshness, mm -hmm. that sort of um, boggy sort of smell. Yeah. But like a, like a fresh bog, not one that's like, there's very little decay, but it's in there, but it's like, yeah. It's push back, I agree, yeah. It cleaned up for the visitors. <laughs> it's like a it's bog fresh, wearing a suit. It rinsed, it rinsed the nasty nuts stuff away. A bog with a suit and a haircut. Mm -hmm. I'm going to well, taste it. Uh, it's basically at a job interview. You want it? Okay. Oh! There's the gun smoke. There it is. Yeah. Yes. In the, it, oh, it's, it's, it's frizzy. It's, it's, Yes, like like someone's just been banging caps of gunpowder. That's what I was gonna say. This reminds me of when I was a kid and you had those little cap guns that you can't get anymore with like the red strip yep. of like pop, 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 right? And that that's you can't that's it, this is completely yep. nostalgic for that. That's right there. That's right there. Wow. Like, like not even fireworks. Fireworks is like too much gunpowder. This is more yep. this is just those red caps. Those that red caps bit of that little bit of like a hint of gunpowder. That is crazy. You know what? I have tasted whiskey now for what twenty years, and this is the first time I've had that flavor in a whiskey. It, this is what blows my mind about this stuff. It's. Ugh. It is one of the things too about SMWS that like they they really like laser focus on some of these crazy flavors that yep. you. That's what I love about them. But then things that you'd never. I mean, I, as. Part of my membership now, I I'm kind of shying away from buying distilleries I know because sometimes I'm just disappointed. You know, you buy the expensive Glen Scotia, and it tastes nothing like the Glen Scotia. So why would I pay that money for it? Why would I pay the premium? So I feel like buying the Glen Turrets and the you know the weird things is going to you know basically get me exposed to these things a, a, a lot better. And Glen Glen Turrets, where's that from? Glen Turret, where is that? The turret, uh, I believe it is a Highland, so it's not in the Speyside uh, Valley. Uh, this, it has such little information on this. It's, you have to go to the website. Ah, thank, thank you, Thad. Thank you, Thad. Well, this, it's, it's so, there's a florality in there. It's very perfumey to me. Again, just trying to mask some, some funk with some kind of perfume. But but Nick, I mean, you know, you, you say you don't go to the distilleries you 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 want to because I think that this barrel does not represent what I'd expect from Glen Turret either, and and that's kind of the excitement. Yeah. 
of, of I guess, yeah, and you, you're right. Uh, I, I guess in that regard, I don't have any expectations having never been there or had any OBs from them. Uh, but while I'm kind of, you know, I've only been doing this two years. So I'm just trying to build uh, my profile up as much as I can and just taste everything. And it seems like, you know, with the money you have, buy the things you haven't had before. And it seems like a good bet that SMWS are going to have something at least interesting. Yeah. Probably it's not going to give you a good idea of what you're getting. So I can't right. exactly say, well, let me tell you about Glen Turret. Normally they, well, actually, I have no clue. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't think I, I know a lot of Glen Turret. I do have a number of bottles in my collection, but it's not this. And I don't, like, it's so hard to know, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that, um, you know, a lot of these distilleries are owned by big conglomerates that want them for blends like Johnny Walker or whatever. And they expect, I want this kind of barrel from you. And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to be unhappy. And I think what they do is when they come up with a barrel that does not fit the flavor profile of the distillery, they sell it to these independent bottlers. And that's why you get these kind of weird flavors in these, um, you know, you know, single cask distributions. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I absolutely, I, yeah, yeah. I like the weird flavors. I mean, what you're calling weird flavors, I would call special flavors. Yes, more, unique uh, flavors. Yes, yeah. Um, outliers, really. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Uh, at some point, we should read the tasting notes. I'm definitely getting the smoke, the gunpowder now in the in the nose, where I didn't before I tasted it. More. You know what? This is my favorite whiskey. Like this is so good. It is so good. This, this is the standout SMWS for me. And I say that after having three amazing whiskeys. So I really like this. Mm -hmm. It is really good. I mean, yeah, Glen Turret really like, I think the first Glen Turret I had was at one of the tastings when you could still do that. And it was uh, notes of Kefefe, which blew my mind. Uh, top, sorry, top notes of Kefefe. And that thing was incredible. So it's, you know, it's been on my radar every, ever since. And every other one I've ever bought, like Oddly Satisfying is fantastic. This one, absolutely fantastic. I have two other SMWSs, three other SMWSs from Glen Turret, an OP in old particular, and an Alexander Murray. Um, cheese pairings. I, I like a cheese that's with, if I'm having whiskey, that's not uh, super, fine. not super flavorful, like something that's with a mild flavor, like a, like a um, you know, uh, like a mild a Parmesan, you know, or like a, um, a white cheese generally, but I don't know. I haven't done much cheese and whiskey pairing. I would just go I am like shite at unctuous and pair of food and blue whiskey. Uh, Brooke Lassie, who was our guest a little while back, um, really good at that kind of stuff. Uh, now that I just said blue cheese, this now reminds me of a blue cheese. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. Because of course. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I don't get I'm not getting blue cheese. I I, I a ah, maybe a little bit. It's in there. Oh, a salty boy. Oi! What are the? Should we read the tasting notes from them? Oh yeah, from SMWS. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what stuff they say. They're they're gonna say blue cheese, I think, Nick. Well, we'll find out. Oh, oh, okay. A bewildering nose that jangled with fermented fruits, mutton breath mutton broth, sorry, not breath, uh, oily sheep wool, camphor, uh, smoked olive oil, gorse, putty, and limestone. Uh, they don't use the Oxford comma there. I'm very unhappy about that. Mineral, farmy, and densely meaty, huge notes of paraffin, bike chain grease, and deconstructed tractor engines. With water, the nose was all on caraway, raw antiseptic wood ash kippers drizzled with olive oil and brine and then pickled onion chips mm. salted pistachios and mud smoothie <laughs> mud smoothie i love that the neat palate was riddled with burning hay iodine more chips salt and vinegar this time goat cheese rolled in ash roof pitch caraway eau de vie and carbolic acid total yet uh rather brilliant madness Reduction brought canvas, wax jacket grease, tarragon, and Thai sweet chili chips. So many chips. Smoked paprika, sausage, horseradish, vegetables and scotch broth, salty pasta water, and natural tar and petrol doused hessian. I don't know what hessian is. Uh, a single prawn cocktail chip in the afternoon. Chips, freaking chips. They should have called this chips. 
Yeah, did they mention gunpowder at all? No. I, so I don't know where that came from. Because that to me was pretty prominent. Uh, that's interesting. Huh. And usually the 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 descript the, the name of the whiskey is pulled from the notes. And yeah, I, so I guess they pulled it and like they just re- pulled it completely and we're like, you're gonna get gunpowder, but there's this is the other stuff. They know. controlled X instead of control seed, their mistake, I guess. <laughs> it's easy to do. They're right next to each other. At the same time, those those, yeah. those yeah, red that, 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 that red strip of like caps, that is in the flavor for me. Yeah. The smell of that is right there. Yeah. Are we sciencing this? No, nope. fuck you. After hearing about the, because uh, I love a good uh, pickled onion chip. I can't help it. I mean, I'm gonna have plenty of this shit. You gonna do I it? Might do, do I it? might do it too. I might give it a try as well. I'm gonna take it. Seems like a lot more savory. Uh, yeah, I want to try it. Yeah. They really should have said at the end of those notes, "Please ask your doctor if Gunsmoke of the Moor is right for you," because it was a long list of shit. That's so, a long list of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it is like a list of symptoms, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doctor, I have kippers drizzled with olive oil. <laughs> Can you help me? Well, that's a cream. You, yeah, that'll, that'll, you know, that'll also, this has right such, up. this has such an interesting nose and flavor that I have to put water in it just, just to see what it does. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for you guys uh, to uh, tell me because I don't, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I definitely feel like the nose is like it doesn't hurt it. Like it, I feel like it's more savory and accessible to me. I think it, it for me at least on the finish, it helps with the peat a lot. You actually, it's helping the peat shine through a little bit and a bit of that smokiness where you know we've we've probably smashed our palates this afternoon with all the other <laughs> the palate, uh, stuff. I'm yeah, yeah, I'm definitely getting a little more peat in the nose. <clears throat> oh yeah, I think there's more bog in there. There's more like there's there's this like bog the next day after you've slept with the bog and like you know and mm. it's like you know a little more disheveled. I don't dislike it though. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, damn you. That is an interesting direction, I think. It feels a little more pointed to me. Like it gets the finish. Oh. <laughs> Smashing pallets. Yep. Love that band. I mean, they're really stuff. They, they, yeah. Like the the taste to me is like a flaming spear, like a tiny flaming spear. Like, but then the finish, like it, it opens up a bit, you know. I'm getting something spongy in the um in the the, the palate. Um, like like a almost like a burnt cake, like a slightly burnt yes. cake. Yes. Right. Like a cake that's overdone to the point where you actually kind of is good. It's not burnt, but it's like like overdone in a, purposefully or something. Um, the smashing pallets. Yeah, that's the mo O three. Where that came from? I feel like uh, I'm guessing Mo is advertising their birthday. A one O three, or that was the root school they remember from. Elementary, there are mm-hmm. five thousand other mo's, um, and this is the hundred and third. Hundred and third, yeah. Um, that's probably that's probably more accurate. And they all stand up at the same time. That's why there's four digits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why you had to prefix it with O. Oh, yeah. No. Mo's. I, no, I, I was think like, I, no. I got it right. I don't care what Mo says. I'm not. I I not taking it back. Paint has its own flavor profile. I like that. I guess everything really does. Well, especially to those who huff. I'll tell you, silver paint, that's that's where it's at. It's a yes. garden variety kitchen kind of, you know, off-white. It's fine, yeah. but that's silver that's paint. Silver paint? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, howdy. Those who are about to huff, salute you. <laughs> are you not entertained? Oh, my God. This whiskey is so this is good. So good. Like oh. of all the stuff we've had today, this really stands out. And we've it's had my favorite really whiskey again. Like it's crazy. <clears throat> and I know that there's a bit of a like because we're you know we've been having whiskey, so it it does affect you know our my mood. It elevates my mood. It, it elevates but, my mood. Yeah, I get it. But it it this is really good. I do want like it, after like it it is different after this journey. You know, like I, if it showed up in a different place in this journey, it would be a different whiskey. So I think we're different after this journey. Oh, for sure. Have we changed, Nick? I think so. Well, you know, better, it, I don't know. I, 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 
I, I say know for the better. I'd be part of your whiskey group, if I was in Oakland still, I I would absolutely be there along with um, uh, important whiskeys and uh, these other crazy people. Well, if you find yourself up uh, in the Oakland, um, uh, by all means, uh, we can get you some of that uh, yeasty uh, Amaruvian, so you can no, really. No, oh, oh, I want to try that. I oh definitely... yes, yes. <clears throat> You know when it's uh, when it's safe to actually see real people in real life i mean um so i owned my house for like two years it, when i was living in oakland and working down in la so i flew back every weekend uh but i haven't been up since uh we should have Nick back on the show and do a, a whiskey exchange. We should do a whiskey exchange where we like we could give him some whiskeys, he could give us some whiskeys, and you know what I'm saying? I like yeah. that. I like totally. that idea. We could do that. Yeah. I do not like. I do not mind that idea at all. I think that'd be good. <laughs> and maybe you know, invite uh, the f bomber or uh, oh f bomber. I get it now. <laughs> well done. I mean, you know, there's we're only one minute over. <laughs> you got I mean, there. The show's called "I Fucking Love Whiskey," Andrew. It's not, it's not like I'm smart. It's not called I'm smart. <laughs> the show's not called I fucking love word problems. That's true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. I'm going to I'm gonna pour a little bit more of this in here. It's, mm. it's just so good. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. So you're saying this is the, the, your favorite of the night? It's, it's... Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Probably. I'm saying the same. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty good. Congratulations, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Just finally, oh, the penny dropped. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Andrew gets a gold star. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I can't reward myself for that. I guess we, I have, a, it's probably about time we should ask Nick uh, oh. a question, right? I mean, yes. now's, now's probably the time. Um, Nick, uh, can, we, can we get serious with you for a second? I mean, if you can't now, when could you? That's a good point. We already asked about the the flag, um, so so um, Nick, you've had some. I I would say, I would say amazing whiskeys. Maybe you think they're good whiskeys. Maybe you think they're amazing whiskeys. But we've had some whiskeys today. After this this tasting of of whiskeys, I want to ask you: Do you do you think you like whiskey? Oh, I see what you're trying to do. Uh, you're trying to get me to say I fucking love whiskey. <laughs> No, we would I get never it. game it we like never, that. No, we would no, never try to get you. It, like, this is organic. This is fully organic. <laughs> if you're you lucky because you, you know, believe you do. You do simple. fucking love whiskey. Be... So I think it. You know, it was a good. It's a good time to, to ask because it's true. I do fucking love whiskey. I think that was one of my favorite responses to that question ever on the show. <laughs> Look, I, I was going to make you I guys love... work for it because I was uh, not saying that the entire show. Because I think, you know, your guests have been playing fast and loose yeah. with saying they fucking love whiskey. And it was about time somebody uh, implemented some uh, some discipline around here. I, I understand that. But Thad gave you six points for that. No, he he earned those. Nick gets it. Totally hey, Nick, Nick gets it. He gets it. Yep. <laughs> gotta, leave you, gotta leave everybody wanting more. Yeah. Um, oh. oh, man. This stuff is so good. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Th Nick, Nick. Uh, thank you for being a guest. Thank you for agreeing to some random person on Instagram saying, hey, do you want to come on a show and taste whiskey with us? Uh, and that's that's exactly what I typed, by the way. It was. Uh, you're welcome. And it's no hardship. I mean, do you want to come on a thing <laughs> and taste some whiskey? Uh, sure. I mean, what? Uh, there's not a downside. Uh, no, there's not. I don't think so. Unless you embarrassed yourself on this show. And I don't think you did. Look, uh, yeah. there. no, this is probably the best behaved I've ever been. I haven't, I haven't railed. I haven't fallen off my seat. I haven't spilled anything anywhere. I haven't walked through a screen door. Yeah, it's happened. Uh, you know, no, you know That's none of those things have happened. The show. I'm, I'm, now, like, I'm now disappointed like, in your performance. No. But I feel like the New Zealand metric of misbehavior is so much more skewed than like, an, like I didn't, you know, walk through a screen door. It's like, that is... Yeah, that's embarrassing, but that's not like that's an accident. Like, <laughs> like it's not yeah. like you stabbed someone in the eye. Like, I mean, I'm not I Australian. Know. We've we, we've got that. <laughs> that's true, and we're we're grateful for that. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, you know, don't give everybody everything straight away. I need to save some for return visits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we, we'd love to have you back in uh, season four uh, later this year. 
WWE yeah. is so fantastic. Um, I want to thank you, Nick, for being our guest. That was so great. Thank you, Uplus13. Thank you, Thaddeus Wessinger, uh, for uh, for getting married three weeks ago. What? Congratulations. And for being our tech. He's, he's amazing. He does such a great job. Um, uh, thank you, Aaron Harvey, for our graphics. Thank you, Cody Bushy, for the bot that's been, like, saying nice things about us in the chat. Like, what? I, I couldn't pay someone enough to do that. Um, hey, May 15th, we're doing a, a, a tasting and I've got still like six uh, spots open. If you want bottles and you're in the LA area and, and you can um, come and get it, 19 bucks for these four whiskeys. You'll get four bucks back uh, deposit uh, when you return the bottles to me. So it's only 15 bucks, 15 bucks. For four whiskeys, I think that's a great deal. And you can taste along with us, I think. Uh, uh, who's, who's the guest? Oh, Timothy, who's on this channel coming up later tonight with uh, Tales by Fire. Single Watch person, it. Single person RPG. Watch it. Like, how does that work? It works. It's kind of great. Yes, no, there's sample bottles. There's two ounce sample bottles. Thank you, Thad. I appreciate that. Two ounce sample bottles, not the full bottle. No. Um, You're tasting along. You're tasting along with us, but that's part of the fun of the show is actually tasting the whiskeys that we're doing. And and um, I could ship up to the Oakland area, but it would be an extra probably what is the um, eight bucks or something like that for the um, if it fits it ships. So I've done that. Um, so if if people that know Nick or Nick want to join in, um, it would be that. Uh, uh, what are the whiskeys we're tasting? Uh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Thank you. We should you. have prepared a graphic in advance. I should have done that, but I didn't. I didn't do that. We'll post it on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, and we'll, oh, that's we'll very post good. it. Uh, it'll yeah. be a Glenn Livett, uh, First Fill Twelve, an Old Pultney Twelve, uh, Ben Rake, Ten Year Old Smoky Ten, and an Arbe. Mm -hmm. Ooh, doll. Because I mean, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. That's all I have to say. Um, what else do I have to say? Hey, subscribe to this channel. If you're not a subscription member of Oak Post 13 and you have the um, Amazon Prime, you can do it for free. It's, it's, it's for free. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Do subscribe to Outpost 13. There, um, there's other great shows on this channel. They, they, they just this morning had a Dig Dug tournament. So they'll do that kind of thing, like have a gaming tournament uh, you can join in. Tales by Fire later tonight, single person RPG. Friend Fiction, where they have. Um, fictional characters that they are in, in, you know, in love with. Um, and they will discuss it for an hour and they will really go into the, the fiction of these characters. And um, they're, they're two wonderful women that just uh, love these things and they have guests on, it's, it's so great. Made up music once a month. People will come on this channel and make up a song in front of your eyes using suggestions from you in the chat. It, it's you it's have pretty awesome. It. It's amazing. It's fantastic. And the songs are available on Bandcamp. You can go get them for free. It's fantastic. Uh, Trek Table. If you are a fan of Star Trek and um, you want uh, you, you see some representation from biopic people, um, this channel, uh, tomorrow at four, I believe. Anyway, subscribe. That's all I'm saying. Subscribe to this channel. There's some great stuff happening. Uh, really interesting stuff. And follow us on YouTube. And uh, Joseph, do you, have a, do you have something coming up, right? Yes, I have a show coming up called East Side Noir. Um, and uh, Andrew's going to drop a link uh, to the Instagram in the chat um and it's basically it's like a noir uh set in multiple uh, time periods it's going to be um on the internet to watch and there's there's like we're doing some work on instagram to like create the characters but and it's set in boyle heights and it's it's just really awesome it's with um uh company of angels and impro theater and it's like a collaborative effort and it's it's really cool the cast is amazing so check that out yeah follow them uh, there's hilarious stuff they're they're putting up all the time <laughs> these characters are trying to they're, they're kind of coalescing in front of your eyes it's, it's really awesome um do i have anything else to say joseph what else, what else i don't know does nick have anything to say what's going on with you you have anything you want to you want to push or or oh, you know? we, uh, no, i mean i'll be crying in the shower from 8 a.m most mornings so uh join me i don't know nothing no, else going on no no don't want to i might join you that sounds Please. nice no. yeah no you can go to only drams and you can uh, you can watch me live I've been vaccinated, so it should be fine. Weird. Yeah, what could go wrong? Too weird. I fucking love whiskey. Um... That's <laughs> it. Uh, we fucking love whiskey, and thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week.
Thanks, everybody.